And not only did they win on Sunday against the New York Jets, they dominated 23 to 0, marking their first shutout win since 2005 here at home. Ironically, that was also against the Jets. Freddie Peralta is getting his second start of the season tonight. Young guy, what do you want to see from him tonight against this New Orleans lineup? And it's just frustrating to watch at this point. The top line continues to produce at an elite level, but one line will not help the team in the playoff picture. Colorado is still on the outside looking in with a lot of ground to cover. I figured since I bobbled at nine, didn't really show up my best skills that well, that I'm going to redeem myself with my great team right now. Our Taylor, Scott, I don't know if you're ready for this, but I'm going to show you anyways. All right. Okay, now we have to bring the Broncos into this a little bit. If you had to look at the roster and you had to pick someone to caddy for you, who would you pick tomorrow? Thank you all for joining us tonight for the NFL Draft edition of Fox 21 Sports. The big event is going to be very interesting. Earlier this season at Nichols State, you broke your single game rushing record, and tonight you broke it again with 218 yards on the ground. But several highs out here at the Denver Coliseum for day two of the state basketball tournament featuring the final four in the 4A and 5A boys bracket. Now the Lewis Palmer Rangers find themselves in a familiar place back in the finals. I'm going to ask you to take your Mark hat off and put your John Elway invisible hat on. Okay. If you are in his position this year, what do you do with that number five pick? Yeah, you guys are kind of Broncos spirited. Are you feeling Ooh. good about this? Yes, yes but we're also so. having deja vu. I mean, right? I mean, Sanjay <laughs> right. becomes the team's fourth head coach in six seasons. Now the team interviewed five coaches. The job went with a coach with a defensive background. And do you think that high school football is still a big contributor and a big positive influence on the communities they play for? High school football is enormous. Time now for the Rocky Mountain Honda Dealer Sports Report. I'm Ashley Giovanna. Well, the Rockies Tour Day Southern Colorado just wrapped up a couple minutes ago, but they started bright and early at one of our very own local high schools. Pitcher Kyle Freeland, John Gray, Jeff Hoffman, along with utility guy Pat Malika, and of course Dinger, made the trip to Pueblo West this morning for a little Q&A session with the West students. Colorado kid Kyle Freeland shared his excitement for the caravan because that means baseball season is almost here. With, with the caravan, you, you know it's right around the corner. So it's exciting that you know spring training's coming up. Uh, we're gonna start get things rolling down in Arizona, and you know talking out here and, and you know talking baseball with other people is also you know really exciting. Different kind of excitement because I mean you don't really get that kind of like close community feel you know most of the time. So it's really cool to get to go out to you know where everyone else lives and, uh, and visit them there. The session lasted about 45 minutes, and we learned the guys like to do some cool things in their spare time, like uh, video games and hunt and fish. They are not allowed to ski or snowboard, though, or ride motorcycles. Did find that out today. And after their first session was over, the players enjoyed a smaller venue with the West baseball and softball teams. All four players offered playing advice, training advice, and inspiration to keep working hard. West head baseball coach Dan Sanchez says he does hope that the teams took away the larger message from these big leaguers. Everyone's a baseball fan, especially in our baseball program, and they, these kids know these names growing up, watching them play college, and we were lucky enough, our program, you know, we played Kyle Freeland in high school. We were lucky enough to beat him, so that was exciting, but what I think the special thing about today is that a lot of these guys talked about how they weren't a stud their whole life. They worked for everything they had. Good message. We can all live by the caravan. Continues tomorrow out in Denver. Well, the NBA released their top selling jerseys for this season. The top result is probably not going to surprise you. NBA champion Steph Curry reigns supreme in the league's list of top selling jerseys this season. Cleveland's LeBron James or King James Curry. His Golden State Warrior teammate Kevin Durant ran out the top three best selling jerseys. The results are based on the league's online store sales between October and December of 2017. It would be the third straight season Curry has led the NBA in jersey sales if this trend continues throughout the year. Wow. Yeah. You got Steph Curry jersey? I, I thought for sure you were going to say LeBron James. I really did. No, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the market for a Nuggets jersey. No Nuggets made yeah. the top 10, so we got we to work on that. It's yeah. going to happen. Keep it I'm up. feeling it. Hopefully <laughs> this latter part of the season. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, welcome into Fox 21's Overtime. I'm Ashley Giovanna. It's week nine and that is oh so fine. We just wrapped up the second to last week of regular season ball for our 5A, 2A and lower classes. 4 and 3A are knee deep into league play and teams are starting to assert themselves as playoff contenders. And if that wasn't enough to get you excited for tonight's show, our Overtime Game of the Week features the most anticipated rivalry the bell game. If you hear some ringing out of Pueblo, your ears do not deceive you. 
My favorite part of going down there, this cute bulldog, and of course the bell, the best part. And a full stadium down at Dutch Clark tonight, where our Fox Women's Overtime crew was just hanging out. Brandon Martin getting things started for the Wildcats. With a 16-yard carry, big first down for Central to get things going. Later in the second quarter, Marcus Duran on the keeper puts Central on the board. 6-0 the first score of the game this evening. Later in the second quarter, we're going to see some Bulldog action right here. Devin Blue is not blue in the face when he finds Buddy Nikolai for a big centennial first down. They're knee-deep into the red zone. This time it's blue, a quarterback sneak to tie the game 6-6, six to six. two-point conversion, puts Centennial up 8-6. to six. And then Nick Montoya lobs it up into the hands of the other guy, Brennan Martin, intercepted. Let's take a look at that final score. Who takes the bell home? Centennial for the third straight year, 24-12 to 12 over Central, your final score from Rampart Stadium. And, of course, the Rampart Rams were in action this evening. The Rowdies have their name for a reason. As you can see, the student section was, as the kids say, lit. Rampart up 28 to nothing. Gabe Chapel with a pass over the middle. With the first down for the Cougars of Coronado tonight as they're playing Rampart. Later in the second quarter, Rams driving. Now, Kale Cormany airs it out to Luke Pelicka. First down, Rams. That sets them up in the red zone quite nicely. This time, a handoff to Zach Tuttle, untouched into the end zone. That would be 35 to nothing. Rams extending their lead over Coronado tonight. Later on the other end, Cougs ball again. Chapel keeps it, takes it right. Eventually pushed out of bounds, but that's a first down. Your final score tonight, Rampart, 42-7 to over Coronado. They are now 3-0 in league play, 6-2 on the season. Falcon traveling down to Canyon City tonight, bringing their successful run game to take on the Tigers. First quarter, Aaron Montelongo to Brand Johnson. Big gain here for the Falcons. Later in the first quarter, Montelongo picked off by Brendan Young, who's becoming a man with that interception. I'll tell you that much. In the Falcon territory, Noah Vidmar with a run in for the Tigers. Canyon City goes up 7 to nothing. Let's take a look at that final score right here, right now. Canyon City 47-14. to 14. That run game from Falcon falling a little short tonight against the Tigers. Big win for Canyon City. Also in action tonight, number 8, Thomas Jefferson, taking on number 4, Palmer Ridge tonight. And let me play a little spoiler. There's a big difference between number four and number eight. Right here, first position, Jane Sparks all over that handoff for Thomas Jefferson. They go three and on their first drive. They punt it. T.J. Anthony Roberson right here on the return all the way into the end zone. That would be the first points for the Bears of the night. Six extra points good. They go up seven and nothing later. The PowerPoint into the camera never gets old. Thomas Jefferson with another chance on third and long screen pass goes nowhere. Big defensive place. Palmer Ridge's offense took a little while to get things going. This is about most of the stuff that they had going on in the first quarter. Ty Evans with a pass to Ray Friel. First down. Again, they took a minute to get going, but you won't be disappointed if you're a Bears fan about this score right here. 28 to 8 in the fourth quarter. Palmer Ridge, big lead over Thomas Jefferson. Again, number four, number number eight. This was big. Also, Liberty Lancers in search of still their first win of the season out at Widefield tonight. Picking this game up in the second quarter. Grant Scruggs airs this ball out to Malachi Salas. He should not have caught that ball, but he did. Big first down for the Lancers. Later in the second quarter, Grant Scruggs this time looking towards the end zone, trying to make the same play happen, but it ends up in the hands of Nathan Road bench, he's not wearing red and white. That's a wide field interception there. Later in the second quarter, Liberty Ball back on it. Scruggs drops back. Sacked by Maldonado. Big thing for the wide field. Glads tonight. Let's take a look at that final score. Wide field 21 to 14. This game is in overtime, and you know Ashley Giovanna likes her some overtime. Now, don't go anywhere. More highlights coming up on Fox Ruins Overtime. And, of course, later in the show, Dutch Clark was not only a busy place tonight. County and East went head-to-head -head last night on Thursday. Highlights of our Thursday Night Rewind coming up during the show. When you think sledding, you think sled, hill, snow, and wintertime leisure. But it also comes in the form of sled, two hockey sticks, ice, and ultra-competitive hockey players. Really? Really? You get this kind of dazed look, and they're like, well, how do you do that? 
And then you have to go through the process of explaining exactly how it, it works. Because your turn so far, you can't move, but if you're square, yeah. that's over and go all the way up. Sled hockey is played by a wide range of athletes with mobility limitations. For one group of disabled veterans in Monument, the rink has become their safe space. Getting the goal is our mission, and you know, as warriors, as military, you know, the mission's always first. And everybody that's a, a veteran understands that. They are the Colorado Sled Hockey Warriors, a team that aims to serve those who have served. Like Jerry Duvell, a former staff sergeant in the U.S. Army, Duvell was deployed three times, twice to Iraq and once to Afghanistan. He was always the picture of health until one day at work. I got back from Afghanistan six months after I got back. I was hit by a machine in a, in a workplace. And uh, basically when he hit me, he amputated both legs. Um, and I was pinned up against the wall. Jerry became a double amputee from the knee down, and like many of his teammates, he fell into a dark place. I was really addicted to the pain pills. And one day I just quit all my pills. I told my wife, you know, um, I'm gonna need your help because I'm gonna really need a struggle during this time. So it's about a month I struggled with um, withdrawals and, you know, night terrors, um, just everything that comes with it, um, the sweats, the fevers. Um, I mean, it was, it was a nightmare. A nightmare he could not seem to wake up from until one afternoon drive with his wife. It was a little gas station and seen the sled hockey van. And nice class, man. I had her stop so I could check it out. And once I started talking to the guy, he's come down on Saturday and try it. So as soon as I came down, he uh, laid a big hit on me. And after that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my sport. The sled hockey helped me pull through and, you know, gave me light at the end of the tunnel. So I was able to, to get through and, you know, help these guys, and they're able to help me on a daily basis. Having their fellow teammates back in more ways than one. For goalie Kevin Brinegar, who drives 267 miles round trip, the Warriors hockey practice serves as weekly therapy. I actually have MS. Uh, I suffered a... a T12, T11, uh, transverse myelitis. Um, so I'm basically paralyzed from about the belly button down. I was in a dark place for a long time, um, physically and mentally. Um, and it was just a moment of clarity. Once I saw that, okay, I can push my body like I used to push my body before, you know, like from the military, you know, you push yourself to the extremes. And then I thought, okay, that was over. Uh, brought me back to get me a little bit more mentally stable and to actually be able to talk about myself uh, with another para because when you're in therapy you, you kind of talk to anybody then once therapy ends you're kind of stuck on your own you know now we've talked about hockey but we can also talk about you know a lot of other issues that we have going on some of the veterans have disabilities that you cannot see like PTSD or Linda Marquez is one of those who suffers from PTSD but sled hockey was just what the doctor ordered I never would have thought that a full contact sport would be therapeutic for me. I get knocked around just like everyone else, and some of the, the newer people are like, are you okay, are you okay? It's like, out here we're just all hockey players. Give them that camaraderie that they had in the military, I think is a big piece that they lose as they get out. I myself lost that, and really looked for it, and I finally found it in this sport. With the sled hockey, um, it allows them to fight for a common goal. Hockey players and teammates who have created a bond as solid as ice. Players on three. One, two, three, Warriors! The Colorado Sled Hockey Warriors are affiliated with the Colorado Avalanche and the only sled hockey NHL affiliate that is able to wear the Camo Avs jersey, which they are sporting right now in Phoenix at the Pacific Coast Sled Hockey League Tournament. Liberty High School senior Kennedy Garnhart has always been passionate about volleyball. Despite curves on the road of her athletic journey, she's never thought to back down. Once she started playing, she never wanted to stop. I would just like get a ball and like pass against the wall and stuff. And then I like begged and begged and begged my mom to let me play. She was in eighth grade and we gave in and she just took off. With the passion and drive for the sport, it seemed nothing could slow Kennedy down. I was bending down to tie my shoe and my mom was like, um. She kind of leans over and her back's like this. It was time to get a doctor's opinion. I was really scared because I was like, what if I'm, my back is broken? The diagnosis was in. Scoliosis, a sideways curvature of the spine. The first question that I asked them was, can I still play volleyball? From the ages of 12 to 17, volleyball remained Kennedy's number one athletic priority. She was determined to change her fate the healthiest way possible. 
With the help of yoga, her back straightened three degrees. She even grew a little. But over time, her spine had a mind of its own, and she could not ignore the severity of her condition any longer. My junior year, right in the middle of volleyball season, I went in for an x-ray. I just knew like my back had been hurting a lot more, and I just kind of like knew. And he came back and he said, it's at 50. And he goes, we, we really should do surgery. I was really scared. That whole volleyball season, I, like I didn't tell my coaches at the beginning, and I just kind of bottled everything up. I kept encouraging her. I said, you need to talk to your coaches so they know what's going on. And so she said, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell them. We were having one-on-ones with our coach, and she came in and she was like, Kennedy, you need to pick it up. You need to trust your passes. You need to set your hitters better and all this stuff. And I just broke down. I told her, this is my situation. I have to have surgery. This could be my last season of volleyball. I really don't know what's going to happen and all this stuff. And immediately they just like came and hugged me and you know told me that they would always be there for me. On the morning of May 15th, 2017, the soon-to-be high school senior went under the knife with no exact promise if she would be able to play volleyball at the same level again. I just had this really good feeling and I trusted every single doctor and like every person there. We went back and the first thing she asked, she goes, am I taller? And she was. Post-surgery, Kennedy grew an inch and a half, and her spine has been corrected from a 50-degree curve to a 12-degree curve. But despite the positive news post-op, Kennedy's mind was on the court. I definitely felt different. After about six weeks, you can start getting on the court a little bit. Nothing above your head, so no setting, which I'm a setter, so I was kind of heartbroken. And then at three months, that was full clearance. So I wrote stuff out every single time. I knew, like, okay, this is the day when I can go play volleyball. A big circle around Bear Creek, the first game of Kennedy's senior volleyball season. My husband and I, we both, uh, we just we had tears in our eyes, and we got very emotional. I went to the gym with her quite a few times before tryouts, but to see her out on the court and to know that she had made it, we were just so proud of her. I cried the first time I played volleyball again. The very first set I had, it just like, overwhelmed me. Even more than her love for the sport, Kennedy wants other athletes with scoliosis to know surgery does not have to be the end of the road. Instead, it can be a new beginning. It's really, really hard. And there are lots of times where I was like, I can't do it. I just wanted to give up, but just like stay with it. And it's so worth it. You know, she was stronger just mentally and physically. And um, I knew that it was going to help her many years down the road from having this surgery. If I think of my life without playing volleyball and doing all of that stuff, it's just not the same. Playing my senior season of volleyball with my best friends that I've played with since third grade, that's the biggest payoff and it makes every single thing worth it. Even more positive news, she already has a D2 offer to play Whoa, in college. Oh my right. gosh, good yeah. for her. Wow. So, Holy. good things to come, not only in volleyball, but she's also a very smart girl. See bright things in her future. Well, the one thing we know about sports, athletes come in all shapes and sizes. Colorado Springs is home to one of the cutest, most cuddly athletes you will ever see. Man's best friend? Check. Cuddly and warm? You betcha. Athlete? Oh yeah. Welcome to the world of Doc Dogs, where dogs compete in three events with competitions held across the United States, Canada, England, and Australia. And there is one canine competitor who is stealing the spotlight. A little Hudson Colk, a little American Cocker Spaniel. When he was a puppy, we, uh, we had him at the beach and he just would not stop swimming. And uh, when we got into the winter, uh, he just really wanted to get, we wanted to get him exercise. So we found uh, Jasper's Splash Zone and came out here and he jumped off the first day, which is pretty abnormal. The almost four-year-old pup has been competing in Doc Dogs big air competitions for the last three years, which is basically long jump for dogs. Some of them just have it inherent in, in the type of breed that they are, and some people like Hudson just like to swim. Um, he's just more of a face candy, you know, he's just a pretty little dog. But even for adorable Hudson, he aims to train hard and compete harder. At least that's what he told me. All right, Hudson, we got to talk about this competition coming up on Saturday. What, what are, you, are you prepared? Hudson, how's your training been going? All right, he's gonna get back to work now. Hudson is a pure athlete, yep. Some dogs that compete in big air competitions jump 25 to 30 feet. Hudson
Hudson jumps a little shorter than that, but he always has fun. He likes to fly. He likes to be in the air, right? The second part, he loves swimming. He just loves being in the water. But he's a flying dog. He likes to be out there, stretch out, and hit the water. Well, I had a chance to work with Hudson. Let's just say our chemistry was that is good. He wasn't buying my skills right out of the gate. This weekend, Hudson and about 80 other dogs will join the athletes at the GoPro Mountain Games in Vail to compete Thursday through Sunday. Other events outside of the puppy party include rafting, climbing, and fishing, just to name a few.